Welcome to this video from Descriptive to Analytical Writing, which is part of our Thesis Writing Tips series. Academic writing is complex because there are many layers in the way that we write. In this video, we'll try and unpack some of those different layers so that you can see what they are. So these are some of the layers that we'll be covering in this video and the next video. Descriptive writing, analytical writing, persuasive writing and critical writing. What makes writing complex is that in a thesis or a paper for publication, you will need all four of them. They are linked, they're not separate. So let's look at descriptive writing. Most academic writing contains some description. You will always find some description in any paper or book. And just to give you an example of a simple, a simple example of description is when you summarize a book or a journal article to include it in your writing, that would be an example of descriptive writing. Throughout a thesis, and in papers for publication, in various chapters, particularly let's say the methodology, you might need to explain processes, methods, materials. You would also be describing definitions and concepts in the literature review. In your data chapters, you might need to describe some of the data. So throughout your thesis, and if you're writing a paper for publication, you will need to describe things. You will have descriptive paragraphs. So what is descriptive writing? Descriptive writing involves providing information without interpretation. Providing information without interpretation. So let's look at an example of descriptive writing. And in this example, you'll see that the description is very succinct. It's not detailed and I wanted to show you that you don't have to write long paragraphs. You can, but you don't have to. Collaborative writing or the collective planning, negotiation and production of a singular text has garnered much attention from writing researchers. So the piece in the middle, or the collective planning and negotiation of, and production of a singular text, explains what collaborative writing is. So in a very succinct way, it provides much needed detail for the reader. So here's another example from a methodology section of a published paper. 36 full-time students from 19 different HSS programs from 27 to 66 years old were recruited. At the time of the interviews, they had been enrolled in their program and so on. So that you can see that what the author has provided is descriptions around the participants. And in this case, the description has been provided in two ways, one in text form and one in table form. So description is necessary to provide your reader with information. Descriptions can be written from a subjective or an objective perspective. Subjective descriptions may contain eye, they may use colorful language, evoke the senses, evoke emotions, and they may include anecdotes and dialogue. So for example, next to my computer, I keep a toy monkey that my father gave me. And if I were describing this subjectively, I might want to convey that emotional value inherent in it. So I might convey that through language or through description, through the language that evokes 
meaning through the descriptions of what I'm seeing. Objective descriptions generally are more factual, they don't contain emotions, they don't contain I, they describe just what is observed without the interpretation. So looking at the toy monkey on my desk again, I wouldn't convey that emotional value here, I would just describe what I can see. Why are descriptions so important? Well, if you write the chair of the meeting was inefficient, then your reader has no way to assess how you came to this conclusion. But if you added that the chair only addressed three of the five points on the agenda in the 60 minutes allotted for the meeting, your reader's response will be, OK, I can see why you think it's inefficient. The more detail you provide, the more convincing the claim for your reader. So here's another example. The interviewee was uncomfortable with this line of questioning. Or the interviewee was uncomfortable with this line of questioning. During questions five to seven, the interviewee started fidgeting in his seat, touching his hand to his mouth, and speaking more slowly while clearing his throat repeatedly. He displayed none of these behaviors during the first four questions. You can see the added bit of detail will convince the reader. Many types of research require descriptive writing, and qualitative research really relies on descriptive writing. Clifford Geertz, the famous uh, anthropologist, made the idea of thick description really popular. And thick description is about providing very detailed description on observations of context and, um, and what, what is happening. And for Geertz, the credibility of the author depended on that depth of description. So just to repeat that, the credibility of the author depends on the description of the context and observations. So Geertz's famous example is on reporting, on reporting if somebody winks at you. You could say this person winked at me, but we wouldn't know what that meant. We wouldn't know if that person was attracted to me, is trying to communicate with me, or has something in his eye. But with the thick description, providing details around the context and observations, we would have a better idea of what that means. Here's an example uh, of thick description from a published paper. In 1836, John Richardson, naturalist with the HMS Her Herald, captured a pink salmon in observatory inlet off the coast of northwestern North America. He described the fish, gave it a name, and preserved its carcass, which he later deposited in the British Museum. Other collectors and scientists followed. They came from Britain as part of boundary surveys and as curious naturalists. They came from the United States as part of exploratory expeditions en route to Alaska. And a few came from Canada in the late 19th century, with the geological survey. British Columbian salmon thus became known to a readership of scientific publications and were catalogued and illustrated in the great 19th century manuals of ethicology. This initial re reconnaissance science and naturalist activity sketched a field of known locations and kinds. It was imperial and transnational and sought not to explain relationships in place, but to connect fish to an abstract order. So the last sentence is an argument, but it would make it the, re the writer would make it very difficult to convince the reader of the argument without providing that description before. And notice that the description contains sources, so the description contains evidence to provide additional support. So to summarize, description and descriptive writing is really important in many academic disciplines. It's, it can be objective or subjective, it can be written in different ways. Some disciplines re require really succinct descriptions, while others will require thick description. But readers often need some description to help them understand an argument or analysis.
So let's move on to analytical writing. Analytical writing involves taking descriptive writing a step further. Analysis involves taking an idea or a concept and breaking it up into smaller parts so that we can understand it better. We examine the elements of an issue or a concept to uncover interrelationships and patterns. So analysis means taking an item apart, separating it into its constituent elements so that we can then look at it in detail. When descriptive writing is taken apart and reorganized into categories, groups, types or relationships, it becomes analytical. Once grouped, a writer can look for patterns, repetitions, contrasts, conflicts or even anomalies, things that don't fit. So for example, when you write in your literature review, there are three key debates in the literature. This shows that you've examined the literature and you've grouped the research into these three debates, and that's being analytical. So writing analytically will include comparing, contrasting, classifying, for example. So here's an example from a published paper. PhD students' training and support are also being examined in terms of pedagogy and professional integration. Notably, there is growing interest in the challenges of the supervision task, the skills and competencies that can be developed throughout the doctorate, and the influence of social networks on PhD paths. So you can see that the literature here has been grouped into the challenges of supervision tasks, the skills and competencies, and the influence of social networks. Analytical writing also contains synthesis. Synthesis involves recombining the constituent parts, but with insight to form new knowledge. So after the analysis, which is breaking the concept up, we draw conclusions about that analysis. So in the example above, the last sentence shows the synthesis of the literature. However, despite decades of inquiries into PhD students' training that allowed the identification of factors that can facilitate or impede their persistence or progress, graduation rem rates remain low in many fields, especially in the human and social sciences. So that is synthesis of the analysis of the literature review in this particular article. So to summarize, analytical writing takes descriptive writing a step further. It involves taking a concept or an idea or an issue and breaking it up into smaller parts. Analytical writing also contains synthesis, where we draw conclusions based on the analysis. So in this video, we've looked at persuasive and critical writing. In this video, we've looked at descriptive and analytical writing. In the next video, we'll look at persuasive and critical writing. So descriptive writing is providing information without um, interpretation. Analytical writing is breaking the elements apart to examine them.
Thank you for watching this video on descriptive and analytical writing, which is part of our thesis writing tips.